Welcome to Fine Arts Day at the Wilberforce School. One of our favorite passages at Wilberforce is Philippians 4.8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. One of the ways our school seeks to live out the scripture passage is to study and imitate great works of art, to sing great music and hymns of our faith, to learn and recite beautiful poetry and scripture. And doing these things draws our students and our teachers to worship our Creator together, who gives us the ability to create as well. It helps us to appreciate what is good, true, beautiful, and to fix our attention on what is worthy of Today, our students will share with you a sampling of these works of art that they have been thinking about and working on. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoy these presentations. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bromhead, a parent at the Wilberforce School. Would you join me now as we pray for our fine arts performance event? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today to acknowledge you as the one true living God. You're the God who does not change and with whom there is no variation. You are also the creator God. You created the heavens and the earth. Psalm 19 tells us how the heavens declare your glory and the sky proclaims your handiwork. You have placed before us the work of our hands as well and today we are blessed to enjoy the many gifts you have given to the student body at the Wilberforce School. The gifts of music, poetry, and the visual arts. We give you praise for the wide variety of gifts you have given to your people and the beauty it provides in our lives. How wonderful it is to hear and see the gifts of performance and music and works of art flow forth from the next generations. In them we see your faithfulness and beauty and, and our attention and affections are stirred for you as one generation proclaims your works to another. We give you thanks for each student involved in this performance and each faculty member who has given of their time to create this beautiful piece of art. And we are in all of your beauty, Lord, and how you left your throne in heaven to become a savior on a cross for our sins and to rise from the grave in victory over death, displaying the beauty and wonder of our salvation. May this fine arts presentation be a blessing to those who experience it this year. We praise you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, I'm Noah Martin, and this is Hannah Park. We are seniors at the Wilberforce School. Welcome to Fine Arts 2021. Love, the universal language. The Explorers 1 class memorizes the familiar John 3.16 passage each February. The song they are singing is based on the familiar scripture, and it also includes the idea that we want to know and love God so that we can trust Him completely and love others extravagantly.
Sarah Coleridge's delightful poem, The Months, takes explorers to students on a journey through the seasons of the year. We all know the feeling of glowing fingers and toes during the snowy cold of January or the refreshing cooling showers of a hot July rainstorm. We hope you enjoy. When you wear it, brings the snow, makes our feet and fingers glow. February brings the rain, dawns the frozen lake again. March brings breezes loud and shrill, stirs the dancing daffodil. April brings a primrose sweet, scattered daisies at our feet. May brings flocks of pretty lambs, skipping by their fleecy dance. Tulips, lilies, roses, fills the children's hand with posies. Pat the lie when cooling showers, April cut in early flowers. August brings the sheaves of corn, then the harvest home is born. Warm September brings the fruit. Forks and then begin to shoot. Fresh October brings the pheasant. Then together nuts is pleasant. So November brings the gut. Then the leaves are whirling fast. Chilled December brings the sleep, blazing fire, and Christmas treats. Class 2 students enjoyed Aesop's Fables this year. They have chosen to share a favorite with you, the man, his son, and the mule. In this fable, Aesop reminds us to have courage and take a stand. We hope you enjoy this storytelling and puppeteering. Class 2 presents The Man, His Son, and the Mule, an Aesop fable. A man and his son were driving a mule to market where it was to be sold.
more. He who tries to please everybody pleases nobody. It is a class one tradition and delight to learn Lewis Carroll's famous nonsense poem, Jabberwocky, originally found in Through the Looking Glass. In learning this poem, students practice inferring the meaning based on context clues of various whimsical words like chortled and galumping. Please sit back and join us as we enter into the Tolgi woods and enjoy the thrilling tale of this fragile day. Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll was big and slimy, toasted, diamond, gimbled wave. All mimsy were the burgos and the moon rats out grave. Was brilliant and the slimy toasted guy and gimbal in the wave. All mimsy were the burrows, sent them on rats out grave. Class 3 will recite for you Psalm 148. This great psalm of praise echoes the very beginning of our scriptures, where we are told that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Everyone and everything will one day praise the great creator God. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy winds fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for 
his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He can raise up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints. For the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord! I hope you are enjoying the program and the fruit of your students' labors. Despite the pandemic, our students have still been able to pursue that which is beautiful and good. This is a unique education. For that reason, families like yours are seeking out our school. We are growing, and this wonderful opportunity has created an urgent need for classrooms. We are expanding to two sections of many of our classes. So we are building seven new classrooms in our lower level. We are building a chemistry lab, and we are looking to update and renovate our theater and our gym. We have raised funds to start this project, but we cannot complete it without those who are with us to help us finish the job. We need your help to build this school. We need help from those who recognize the unique calling of this education, distinctively Christian, characterized by academic excellence, joyful rigor within a classical framework. If you would like to take a tour of the spaces we're renovating, or if you'd like more information on how to help give towards this project, please contact me, Jenna Axelson. After studying Beethoven during the first half of the year, the lower school has turned their attention to another one of classical music's greats, Johann Sebastian Bach. Sometimes referred to as the fifth evangelist, Bach's sacred music is rich with scripture and meant to move the listener to worship. Today, the lower school will present Jesu, Joy of Man's Desiring, from Bach's Cantata 147. <laughs> Class 4 students have memorized a timeline of Old Testament history, one that incorporates key words and hand motions. It provides a memorable way to place biblical passages into the correct time periods and geographic areas. Enjoy following along with the class as they mention many of the familiar stories between the creation of the world and the coming of Jesus Christ. 
Walk through the Old Testament. Thousands of years of history. 77 important people, places, and events. Envisioned on a giant imaginary map. All designed to create a framework for biblical knowledge. Using our hands. Creation, fall, flood, nations. 4,000 years ago, Ur, Persian Gulf, Salt. Sarah, Abraham, Lot, Terah. Tigris, Euphrates, Heron, Paradise. Sea of Galilee, Jordan River, Dead Sea, Mediterranean, Israel. Ishmael, Isaac, Esau, Jacob, Joseph, Egypt, Jews, Egypt. 400 years, bondage. Moses, let my people go. No. Ten plagues, Passover, Red Sea, Mount Sinai, Law, Tabernacle, Levites and priests, offerings and feasts, counting the faces, Kadesh Oasis, twelve spies, wanders, dies. Moab, Moses, second law, dies. Joshua, Jordan, Jericho, divide, One of the capstone projects for Class 8 is memorizing and publicly presenting a declamation, which is a historically significant speech. Declamations this year range from a eulogy to Alexander Hamilton to Malala Yousafzai's Nobel Prize acceptance speech. Please enjoy this compilation of declamations from this year's Class 8 students. There is never a time in our American democracy where we must ever think we're wrong when we protest. We reserve that right. We, the disinherited of this land, we who have been oppressed so long, are tired of going through that long night of captivity. And now we are reaching out for the daybreak of freedom, justice, and equality. And I want to say that we must keep in all of our actions, and I want to stress this, in all of our doings and in all of our deliberations, here this evening and throughout the week, we must keep God in the forefront. We must be Christian in all of our actions. But I want to tell you this evening that it is not enough for us to talk about love. Love is one of the most pivotal points of the Christian faith. And there is another side called justice. And justice is really love and calculation. Justice is love, correcting that which revolts against love. I've never been on a bus in Montgomery, but I would be less than a Christian if I stood back and said, because I don't ride a bus, that it doesn't concern me. And I will face intimidation and everything else along with these other stalwart riders for democracy. And I can hear a voice saying, if you do unto the least of these, you do it unto me. And I've come to see that as we fight and struggle for our rights, some of them will have to die. But somebody said, if a man doesn't have something he'll die for, that he isn't fit to live. Thank you. It was some time ago that I was in Berlin. 
And there came a man to me and said, Ah, Miss Ten Boom, I am glad to see you. Don't you know me? And suddenly I saw that man that was one of the most cruel overseers, guards in concentration camp. And that man said, I am now Christian. I found the Lord Jesus. I read my Bible, and I know that there is forgiveness for all of the sins of the world. But then I have asked God's forgiveness so that I can ask one of my very victims forgiveness. And Fraulein Ten Boom, ask once and you are forgiven, will you forgive me? And I could not. I remembered the suffering of my dying sister through him. But when I saw that I could not forgive, suddenly I knew I myself had no forgiveness. Do you know that Jesus has said that when you do not forgive those who have sinned against you, my heavenly Father will not forgive you your sins? But I was not able, I was not, I could only hate him. And then I took one of these beautiful texts, one of these boundless resources, Romans 5.5. 5. The love of God is spread abroad into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. And I said, thank you, Jesus, that you have brought into my heart God's love through the Holy Spirit who is given to me. And thank you, Father, that your love is stronger than my hatred and unforgiveness. That same moment, I was free. And I could say, brother, give me your hand. And I shook hands with him. And it was as if I felt God's love stream through my arms. You have never touched so the ocean of God's love as that you forgive your enemies. Can you forgive? No. I can't either. But he can. The parables of the lost in Luke chapter 15 reminds us that Jesus is the finder of the lost. At some point in time, we have all been lost, but we have a Father, a Heavenly Father, who searches for us, who calls out our name, who waits patiently for our return. We were lost, but now we are found. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who has repented than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not lay a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And he said, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, 
who sent him into the fields to feed pigs, and he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here in hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion. And he ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring forth the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed you. And yet, yet you have never given me one goat that I might be able to celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes and devours your property, you kill the fattened calf for him. And he said to me, Son, you are always with me. Everything that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad. For this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. This year marks 10 years of service for three of our teachers, Caitlin Browning, Barb Seidel, and Irving Yang. We are so grateful to have these three teachers as teachers, colleagues, and friends. Thank you so much for your service, Caitlin Browning, Barb Seidel, and Irving Yang. Love, Loss, Revolution, and Redemption. Les Miserables premiered in London in 1985, and ever since then, it has thrilled audiences all over the world. This year, our students have risen to the challenge of putting on the musical of all musicals, right here in our own backyard during a global pandemic. Here is the act one finale of, from this spring's production of Les Miserables. One day more, another day, another destiny, this never-ending road to Calvary. These men who seem to know my crime will surely come a second time, one day more. We did not leave until today.
teacher, I am so thrilled to share with you some of your children's artwork from this school year. All of my lower school students from our youngest explorers to classified students have worked patiently, diligently, and joyfully. They consistently demonstrated a willingness to challenge themselves and persevere even when the task at hand was difficult. Developing foundational art skills requires patience and a willingness to take risks. We work to develop brush technique with our painting projects, imitating Van Gogh's sunflowers, for example. We work to develop our drawing skills and habits of close observation by sketching from nature, as well as by copying masters such as Leonardo da Vinci. And we learn how to mix acrylic paints in painting to achieve the desired effects for our project, painting projects such as the Monet water lilies imitation. Your children have regularly exceeded my expectations and I'm so proud of them all. I know you will enjoy scrolling through our virtual gallery and seeing your students' beautiful work on display. To view this year's virtual art gallery, scan the QR code at the end of our presentation or visit wilberforceart.org. 